partnerships are very important from the get-go, remove silos, engage the users. I mean, that's, that's where there is a lot of hope for, for reuse in Europe, I think. And Jaime, in, uh, you are in a utility company. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, from, from the point of view of uh, a utility, uh, a public utility and, and a producer, uh, we produce reclaimed water. I think the, 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 the key factor is demand. Um, let me tell you some figures. Um, Canal Isabel II is a public water utility, supplies water for Madrid region. Uh, Madrid region is not a big area. It is just uh, 8,000 square kilometers. And we supply water for 6.7 million inhabitants. Uh, we have uh, 17,000 kilometers pipe for distribution, for supply of water and distribution, 15,000 for the sewerage network, and just only 650 uh, to supply reclaimed water. Um, so the demand. Uh, we use reclaimed water for uh, watering uh, golf courses, uh, watering parks, green areas in municipalities and cities, and also an industrial use, probably one of our best customer in reclaimed water, which is a, a paper manufacturer. So the, 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 the industrial use uh, represents only 16% uh, of the reclaimed water used. But our production, our annually production of uh, uh, reclaimed water, uh, because we have uh, more than 65 uh, with water treatment plants with tertiary processes to produce reclaimed water, is uh, around 130 cubic hectometers per year. But from these 130 cu uh, cubic hectometers, just only 13 are reused. The rest are discharged into the rivers. Is it a problem? Yeah, I think yes. So we, we have more demand, we can uh, use the, the, the reclaimed water for, for industrial purposes for cleaning street, for uh, watering parks. Um, we have, um, okay, a problem. We, we are improving the quality of water rivers, discharging reclaimed water into the rivers, of course, which is, is good for the environment. Uh, maybe we have oversized our infrastructures. Uh, this is, uh, as you have mentioned, one of the mistakes we have to learn about, probably. Uh, we have more offer than the demand. Very good insight. Uh, Claudia, on the innovation and uh, regulation. Yes, <laughs> thank you again. <laughs> yes, uh, no, because I, I was uh, listening to my colleagues and, uh, and both of them picked up uh, uh, one important element uh, and it is also indirectly it's the resources which are dedicated to the water use and the resources necessarily are also linked to uh, the public health. So uh, it is dangerous to reuse uh, water, which is coming from, uh, for example, uh, wastewater, uh, wastewater. Huh? We can still use that water, but it has to be treated and, um, and there there, therefore certain facilities are, are to be put in place. Now, how these facilities are then, uh, um, let's say, which are the elements, which are the parameters for uh, guaranteeing that uh, this water, it is finally safe. Uh, it is, uh, as um, uh, both Hervé and Hemet uh, were earlier saying, it is to be defined together, first of all, is a public health uh, requirement. Therefore, uh, government, uh, European policies uh, are already in place, but they need also to be further implemented because we can improve and eh? we can use more, we can do more. The same reuse water regulation, which is in place in 2020, will only become effective in 2024. Um, right now, it is ongoing the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive, uh, the revision, uh, the public consultation will be closed uh, uh, later on uh, in July. And third, uh, last but not least, is also the both the Bathing Water Directive and, um, and um, the sludge directive, 
which are uh, all uh, all linked together. Why? Because um, they have the, the, the clear element, starting with the fact that we need more water, and therefore we have to reuse certain uh, certain waters. Um, we need to have a clear assessment of uh, what is considered a safe water, uh, for what purposes. And also uh, in this process, it is very important to remind that we are a European uh, Union made of 27 uh, member states. Uh, we do uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, those requirements uh, tend to be behind uh, certain smaller European countries or where the market size does not make it so relevant to start with in the beginning. Um, therefore, uh, in terms of resources and also to, uh, and here I go to uh, Laurent's uh, idea of innovation as well, is that um, uh, more, um, a more coherent approach is needed among European policies in accordance with the member states' policies. We need to make sure that uh, innovative, uh, uh, let's say, testing methods uh, are also uh, being used uh, and included in the legislation, but also being used uh, easily uh, from a country to another country. Because as today, um, if you need, uh, if you have an, an amazing innovative product that will help uh, a utility uh, like Canalisa Secunda to uh, detect certain uh, um, bacteria in a very rapid and uh, cost-effective way, uh, which has been approved, for example, in France, will need to go through another process of approval in, um, in Spain. And then again, we'll do the same for France, for Italy, and so on. Uh, why this? So how can we come around uh, this, uh, this issue? And uh, keeping also in mind the fact that uh, we're here talking about internal market as well, where in one Europe, and it is supposed uh, to have, uh, let's say, clear and defined rules and freedom of movement uh, of goods and services across, across the EU. And uh, unfortunately, um, today it is really not uh, yet the case for what concerns uh, certain, uh, let's say, uh, tools which are very relevant uh, for the water we use and uh, all uh, other kinds of water. Before, before we ask the same question to Alain, I have a, a question in the chat for uh, Jaime. It's uh, because you mentioned that uh, uh, you have water, but you, uh, is it possible to, to send your water outside of Madrid to other destination? Because other places don't have, a, are not that lucky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the question is that you need infrastructures to reach uh, the destination, the point of consumption. Uh, it is possible, but of course, it is needed a lot of infrastructures, a lot of pipes. Let, let's imagine that we will be in 20 years from now. Do you think that it could be possible? Yeah, I think uh, the same. We have uh, built uh, a big uh, infrastructures uh, of pipe for supply and drinking water. We are going to, to build a, a, another big uh, network for uh, reclaimed water. Yeah, it's true. You have to balance demand and consumption. Uh, the, sorry, demand and, and, and the offer. And uh, it would be also a good idea to share the production, of course. But you have to, to agree the building infrastructures, these kind of things. Yeah, that could be a thought that uh, we can replace oil with water and use the pipe to transport. Well, uh, <laughs> after a good cleaning, of course. <laughs> uh, Anna, what, what is your point of view on the, the different challenge and the, the, uh, the, the, the key point for use? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for giving me the, the, the opportunity to, to express me on that. I would say that, um, uh, you know, at Schneider Electric, we are a technology provider and um, we help our partners, uh, one being on the panel, by the way, uh, to build the solution uh, of the future and uh, to tackle uh, the, the reuse water challenges that are uh, the circularity, the decentralization, the control, uh, but also the resource management and so on and so forth. From my point of view, the main challenge is that in the water industry, we have not been able yet to put a value on the water. And value is not only the cost, 
but also the value for the environment and the value for the community. Um, if, and I think the first to go to this, um, uh, to this uh, understanding are very much the industrial applications and the industrial players. Uh, I would mention, for instance, that um, uh, we, we have done some, some studies in Schneider in, in, to, to, to evaluate the water footprint of devices. And um, as we are ourselves an industrial player, and uh, just as as a, as a data point, the, we need twelve thousand liters of water to manufacture an iPhone. And I can tell you, I did work on some microelectronics plants. The quality of the water inlet is as no equal in the world because we have to look about minerals, bacteria, not so much, but minerals. Uh, the, the quality of um, the, the, the supply, the quality of the temperatures and so on and so forth, that is uh, very much important on the warfare plants, for instance. And uh, I think reuse water, it's gonna become a standard in, in, in industrial for sure. And um, because uh, uh, water is becoming an ingredient on the manufacturing processes. Of course, we think about food and bath most of the time, but um, just keep in mind that the number one uh, consumer of industrial water as far as industry is oil and gas. And the second is mining mineral. And uh, we have some examples for mining in South America where we create water plants just for the mining process. And of course, in this, in this uh, process, we reuse the water definitely. This is the key points. Then, I would just uh, uh, bounce back on a question that has been uh, asked to Raime. I think also that we, we can also for the drinkable water, uh, treat the water and discharge in, 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 the, um, in the rivers. I don't think this is an issue. However, if we look at the holistic picture that we have in the reuse water, efficiency, flowing or discharging in the, in, in, um, in the river is not very efficient. So it would be from a process standpoint, I'm not saying that we should regulate it, huh? don't, don't, don't get me wrong, but it's it, reusing, recycling will put a better efficiency in the reuse because uh, we still have losses in the pipes. Uh, the, we know the re what happens to the river because if we are in the water industry very careful about the river, somebody else may not be that careful and we have to retreat the water again and so on and so forth. So, my two points are technology, we are okay, and uh, reuse is gonna become a standard pretty soon. I agree with you. Uh, uh, yeah, um, technology is available, technology is good. Cost effectiveness can be improved, sure. Um, it's a question of we have facilities, we have uh, processes starting, uh, Sometimes it's uh, uh, worse to stop a process, to restart again. Uh, uh, there are more uh, maintenance costs, more, um, sure. a lot of costs, a lot of costs related to stop and start infrastructures. Uh, even quality is affected if you store uh, water uh, without uh, a use. Um, uh, Another challenge we, we have to, to, to take into account or another uh, thing, uh, important thing to, to be taken into account is the, the, the energy balance or, or, or the carbon footprint associated to produce reclaimed water. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we are a, in a Mediterranean country. Uh, Spain is a, a dry country, of course, and, and we have to, to be very uh, um, conscious about drought periods, about its scarcity. So uh, the, the plan to have an alternative source of water is important for, for most of the, the, the utilities in Spain. And probably the, this would explain uh, to have uh, an oversized uh, infrastructures to have an alternative source of water. And by the way, uh, maybe we don't, I don't want to monopolize, but um, um, I did another uh, <laughs> the, the topic about um, 
uh, energy efficiency and uh, energy decarbonization for the water infrastructure as well, which is becoming uh, in some countries a must and in other countries a way to improve also the cost of energy for the process and also the, um, the, um, the contribution to the environment by reusing more renewable and less GHG uh, generating uh, systems. Maybe Laurent, a quick comment on the technology. Uh, definitely, I think the technology is there if you are not looking at other parameters. For example, we have done zero liquid discharge projects in the petrochemical industry. So we know and we have example of you take a petrochemical plant and, uh, and you have a, 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 a water treatment plant that ends with an evaporator, a crystallizer, which means that by the end you have uh, zero liquid discharge. The cost of doing that, the, the intensity of energy of doing that is high, but in some places they have no choice. So I think the, the technology is there. For me, the next challenge will be what you say, it's a minimize, of course, the cost, make it more resilient. It has to be more resilient. Uh, in, make sure that you involve not only the, the proximity of the plant, but uh, the water basin and how this would interact with the water basin, how you can store the waste. What I think the the, shift, the key challenge is not so much technology, although we are always trying to decrease the cost of technology and make it, uh, make it better at taking changes, for example. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a different challenge we have, I think. If I may, before we, we switch to the next question, uh, I don't know if Ilan, you can uh, uh, say a few words because you write something very interesting on the chat just in, in, uh, in one minute, just to to, to, to explain what's, uh, what's happening in Israel. Yes, uh, thanks for adding me to the panel. Um, Israel has a water sh shortage story for many years. So from, uh, for several decades, we are uh, trying to use uh, effluence from sewage treatment for irrigation. And therefore we have a national, uh, actually, uh, regional and national uh, network of water and, and uh, effluence. And doing so, uh, you can have uh, the customers for the reused water, all the, all the farmers can get their supply and uh, these different tar tariff for uh, effluence and for fresh water uh, and uh, having uh, doing it regulated on the, the national level with uh, the water cost and uh, the obligation to high standard uh, enable us to, uh, to have this high recovery ratio of uh, wastewater. So I think it's a, uh, it's, uh, to get there you have uh, uh, to do it in regional level at, at the first, so you have enough customers for the uh, reused water and uh, the water cost will be higher. Uh, you, you should pay more for the sewage treatment. Yeah. Is always a question: who should pay it, the the farmers or the or the municipal users? Uh, meanwhile, it's uh, mostly the municipal users. Um, so uh, it's it's regulations and and cost and the infrastructures. Yeah. From my point of view. Thank you very much, Ilan. Thanks. The next question is, uh, if it's a small city would like to start to reuse water, what are the first crucial steps? Um, I don't uh, take uh, Madrid or Milan, or, a small one. Okay, I would like to do something. Where should I start? Okay, maybe I can jump in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was born in a small city. You know, I think the, what it comes to my mind would be to do an in-depth inventory of resources and uses and demands. The city needs really to understand, you know, where they get the water from, where does it go to, include uh, industry, include the uh, tourism, seasonal demands uh, and seasonal. And then if you do that, that, that good inventory, you have to find somebody probably who has done it, you know, get, get some advice from outside, be open to outside advice. Yeah. Yeah, fully agree. A balance, demand and protection. What do you mean by protection? Production, production. Production, oh, sorry, yes. Sorry, sorry, my English. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, as a producer, you know, uh, we, we, have to, we have to balance this. Uh, even, uh, uh, it's not uh, 
directly link with the size of the city, the village. It's the same. You have to balance your production with your uh, demand. And I'm sure that you had uh, previously this. You have to go to the president of the city and you say, okay, I have this project. Uh, should we go or not? Uh, the first question will be the costs uh, or the, the need or therefore for you, what is your experience? What is the easiest, I would say, uh, request that uh, the president should say yes? He cannot refuse. You know, it's always a good... Uh, it's good tariffs. Uh, you <laughs> can encourage the, the, the use of reclaimed water uh, at half price. Yeah, it would be good. Um, uh, what we do is uh, different agreements with uh, different municipalities, different town halls. We agreed to build the infrastructures to reach their green areas, their, their um, golf courses, their uh, parks, and uh, be watered with uh, reclaimed water. We agreed to build these infrastructures and there is a, a fee which is, is paid uh, by monthly on our billing to try to cover the investment that Canal de Isabel II has uh, uh, done for building the infrastructure. Agree. If it is um, regulated, of course, it would be very, very good. Uh, this encourage investment, this encourage consumer, this encourage everything. Also to be confident about the use of retained water. Uh, let's say that Farmers are, are a bit reluctant uh, uh, about the use of reclaimed water for irrigation crops. Uh, that is the, 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 the question we have faced starting an, an r and &I project to demonstrate uh, that there is no uh, bad effects uh, about the use of reclaimed water, not only on plants, fruits, vegetables, but also the soil. Thank you. Thank you, Jaime. Any other comment from the panel? Maybe one comment maybe is that when, if you approach the city with a solution and if you, and I don't think that's the right approach to be honest with you. I think it's better before you do that. And often actually it's the opposite now. I think the intercommunalities and the small cities would come to us already with a problem well-defined, but I think it's, you want to engage early on, not with a solution, but trying to understand the problem together and then the solution. The city is part of the solution, if you want. Uh, so this way, uh, this way, the yes is easier <laughs> if the city is part of, uh, of the definition of the solution. Yeah, by experience, uh, I think I will say the same as Hervé. Uh, the best is, um, as usual in business, but even more true in this specific case, to come with the strategy. What we want to, as a municipality, we want to achieve, or as a utility, we want to achieve, what are the problems? And, and that, that's going to be also a very good argument for the politicians to turn this strategy in funding mechanism or in, uh, in decisions. Uh, and, then, and then by having this strategy, balancing the resource, the demand, and also the fluctuation that may happen with uh, different clim climate impacts, that would open a discussion about the technology. And um, I don't want to bridge the next question, but also what kind of data you should have access to and to de-silo them to go further in the project. Claudia, or... Oh, your microphone is not on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I was absolutely right, so I was talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Alain, you, you, you just point out a very good um, uh, thing is the digitalization. Does it help? And how? Uh, what kind of data should we use? And should we make also this data available to the public, to the citizens? Um, so, so first of all, it, it's, it's clear that now in the, in the industry, um, getting access to more data, it has a huge potential for efficiency and uh, as a result for uh, sustainability as well. So it's, it's definitely one of the key enablers for the next step of uh, evolution, uh, I don't say revolution, in the industry and in the water as well. 
um, the, um, the main topic that we, we have around digital is that, that to be sure uh, that um, we will um, uh, be able to connect a different data source. And uh, this industry is, uh, is very much siloed. It's a siloed from uh, uh, a build design operate process, I would say for the, for the complete cycle of the industry. But also when you are just at the operate, uh, there is a lot of specialties and uh, uh, the, hydraulic, the hydraulic specialty, the electric specialty, the automation specialty, the piping specialty and so on and so forth. And uh, the, main, the main issue is to be able to de-silo and uh, to have a kind of holistic data source that uh, on top of which we will be able, us with partners or partners themselves to, 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 to have uh, what we call uh, artificial intelligence. I prefer to call it augmented intelligence because we still need people around to make the final decision. Um, and uh, in order to, uh, I would say, improve the energy usage, the water usage, the, um, the quality and so on and so forth. And um, uh, uh, that's, that's pretty much the way, the way to go. But digitization definitely is, is, is a must. Um, and um, it's more about the silo and getting the data than having a big plan to share the data. Uh, of course, sharing the data is important with the, with the customer and uh, the consumer in this. Um, but um, as Jaime mentioned, uh, when you were talking about uh, piping water from Madrid to another place, um, it's difficult to compare uh, the different infrastructures and the different problematics. And uh, it's not like a building where energy efficiency on the building for a bank is pretty much as the energy efficiency for the building for offices in restaurants or whatsoever. But in as far as uh, infrastructure, depending of your demand, more or less industrial, more or less agricultural, uh, you have a challenge. Uh, Alain, may I be pushy? Uh, because you say that the data are in silo. But uh, if I use a system from Veolia, from Schneider, from Siemens, um, you have your own system that are absolutely locked. Therefore, you are part of the problem. Uh, how is it possible that we unlock the system with the big players like you? Um, and I, uh, there are some European projects that tend to have the same data models, to ha have at least the same data models that we compare. The, um, is it possible that we can imagine that um, things will evolve or will still continue to lock the business? So, yeah, yeah thank you for the, for the push. So first of all, uh, Veolia and Schneider are using the same data model, but that's a, that's, that, that's, that's a commercial agreement. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have been advocating in Schneider for years um, for openness and standards. And um, uh, I am member and board member of the Digital Europe uh, um, Association as well, where uh, we definitely have to to enable the data sharing, the data privacy, and also the data security. Um, but already today, we, we, have, we have systems that uh, are uh, able to insource data from different regions and you, you can make it work, I would say. The, the real missing point, I would say, is, um, is not really about data sharing. I would say it's more about simulation which means the, the people need real data in order to simulate their installations. And in order to simulate the installation, we have to have a kind of digital twin. So it's more around a technology, which is simulation rather than data model, because I think on data model, we will, we will get there at some point. And we are also seeing that, and I take again, Veolia, Veolia is not using Schneider technology for the data and that's okay. And we can interface as well. So. I think the industry of digital is going that way, the same way that the IT people went 20 years ago. <laughs> Maybe, you know, I think we do have, you know, complex problems ahead of us, you know, the problems of micro pollution, the problems of carbon footprint, climate change. So I, <laughs> I like to present three pillars of hopes that makes us not depressed when we think about these problems. 
And I would say digitalization is one of these pillars, definitely uh, big hopes. Uh, I think if you look at the silos, I would agree with what you say, I think, but historically there has been collaboration on models and all the companies and stakeholders really need to collaborate on models. For example, you know, the famous ASM models for wastewater treatment. Well, there was a lot of collaboration and, and our companies were participating. We want to participate. And at that level of science and technology sharing, I think we all have the same need and push for science to progress because it will help us all basically. So, so we want to push and collaborate at that level. Uh, then of course we, and as you say, we work with our suppliers in our case to make sure that we, we don't create a, a, a mess to, to simplify. We work with our customers. Sometimes we're in between our customers and our suppliers and we collect a lot of know-how and, and, and things when we do that. So, uh, so I think we need to de-silo. There will always be commercial differences, which make our company, you know, that brings value to some of our companies. But I think we all have the same need to yeah, work together and make sure that uh, when we say digital twin, we mean the same thing because digital twin means so many different things to different people and et cetera, et cetera. The models that we use, you know, we, we contribute to uh, increasing their, their accuracy, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Let me, let me add something. I think it could be relevant for, 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 for this point. Um, uh, I agree, uh, digitalization is one of the pillars, of course. Um, we invest a lot in instrumentation, uh, digital twins, uh, simulation, uh, 3D models, uh, modelization, hydraulic modelization, of course. Uh, and we are dealing with a lot of data. Of course, interesting thing, sharing data. Sure, transparency is one of our values. Sure, sure. Uh, but you have to maintain your, you, to keep your confidence on your data. Uh, it is not important to develop a huge uh, network of sensors, a huge network of devices uh, with a, a very high accuracy. You have to maintain all of this data, all of this equipment working properly. Because uh, when, uh, you know, uh, artificial intelligence technologies, neuronal networks, uh, genetic algorithms, all of them works with a lot of data, but you have to, to be confident with this data. Uh, so not, not only important to invest a lot on digitalization, but also to maintain these infrastructures in good conditions. Yeah. Vim, uh, you, you, you wrote a very interesting comment. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, Vim? No. Yes. Yes. Well, I, very interesting uh, discussion about digital twin, and uh, I, I'm working myself on digital twins on uh, water safety infrastructures like uh, storm surge barriers. Um, integration is very important, and even uh, uh, at the national level, we have silos uh, that really hamper the sort of sharing data in a way that you can trust the data that they are available. So one of the key issues has become a, a data portal where we have quality assured data. We know where the sensors are and why they are there. I mean, it's so we have to sort of um, almost reorganize the way we are using data uh, because we started long ago with data-driven modeling and things like that. And now we're building digital twins and it becomes more and more complicated, but we have to go back to the essence, I would say. Well, it sounds very obvious, but I mean, has been, as has been said, it's, it's a whole world in itself, uh, digital twins, very different meanings. And, but for us, the, the, the data portal and quality for data and looking at sensors and uh, before you start to use uh, data analytics on database that cannot be trusted or, I mean, as we said, rubbish in, rubbish out or, well, other phraseologies, but... Uh, if I may, I couldn't agree more than we, 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 but we are overusing digital twin. And yeah. digital twin um, is, uh, 
is is maybe not the right word. And I think the industry should find something else. This is the reason why I was very cautious when I talk about simulation. Yes, but Ella, maybe maybe we use it to make people aware that it's not very functional doing it, and then go back to something else we still have to invent. But and just to complement, um, we 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 are working on some models of digital twins, and more and more we we integrate uh, completely the asset management uh, yeah. of, of the digital twin. That means that we also include the management of the sensor, so the data generation yeah. in order totally to agree. have a, a counter fire on the um, rubbish in. <laughs> the, <Yeah. data. laughs> it was another word I remember, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but you use the same, you know, we get involved with metagenomics on the other pillar, which is biotechnology involving, and it's the same, you know, and metagenomics, people get so excited. That, but then I can tell you that EPA realized that... Uh, there was so much wrong data on, yeah. this, uh, on these genomes that they decided to spend resources to clean up databases and make sure. So I, I agree 100% with, uh, with you, Michael. And by the way, we are now in, the, in some simulation where we have to predict uh, climate disasters. We are also asking the digital tool to generate his own data, which is another story. <laughs> Well, another notion I I encounter working with different sort of the water boards and national agencies for water safety and security, uh, that is that um, they, it's also developing a certain language in the sense that you understand the language of the different silos. Um, and it means that um, um, we use the digital twin uh, and the wordings and the language to bring people from different silos together. It took a while before people, even from water boards and the National Agency for Water Safety, were talking with using the same wording and then understanding what they meant. So it's, again, it sounds very obvious, but uh, connecting communities and then um, ending up with a sort of common understanding what the, what the key issues are. And of course, it's it's a hype, eh, the digital twin. Everybody's talking about digital twins. And, well, we have this, this digital twin scoping instrument where we simply sit together with people from different organizations that make contributions, for instance, to, uh, well, building a wastewater treatment plant and operate it and, and simply exercise in uh, the terminologies. It sounds very basic, I know. Uh, and they're very well-educated and trained people, of course, but they have different... Um, ideas in their minds what we are talking about when we talk about the digital twin. So I agree uh, we, should, we should go back to the basics if I understand you well and rebuild so what needs to be done. But maybe it's, it's a new generation what we're doing. One of the other things that came up is that well we, we convinced uh, and I'm working for this multinational company Volker Vessels uh, it's a building company and it's engineering company of Eco de Bond. And we said, well, a digital twin doesn't come in a box. Uh, and they said, oh, it's not digital twin as a service. And I said, no, probably not, because uh, we would sell something like a black box and you wouldn't know at the end of the day what we were doing. You don't want it. You should not want it. Okay, that's from my perspective. Yeah. I, I have a good report what Vim is saying at some point. We did an application on the completely automatic uh, irrigation system in New Zealand, where we put around the table a specialist of weather forecast, a specialist of geology, and a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Claudia also has something interesting to say. Um, I would also like, yeah, absolutely agree with uh, all uh, what was just said before on um, on the data importance and the other, I would like the, the other uh, side, you know, of, of the coin, which is also the, the, the importance of the data as public information as well, because what is uh, being observed, uh, especially in the southern uh, countries, it is the lack of trust of the citizens towards tap water uh, and safety of the tap water. So when we have all this data, first of all, we there's a lot of information and in terms of uh, uh, digitization of pro uh, processes and of systems, uh, that's gonna be super important, especially for, for the infrastructure managers 
um, because of the, the, um, the leakage and uh, that's going to be even more uh, known and uh, with uh, greater opportunities uh, for fixing the issues where they are. But the trust of the citizens on tap water, I think it's really, really important and it goes all together uh, with all we, what we are talking about here because it starts with the drinking water, but of course it's the rural water. It is uh, what we eat, what is on the table, and it is a lot, uh, a lot more. So uh, I think that there is uh, more need for, uh, let's say, the use of this data in the public information as well. We arrive at the end of the, the, the question. I have one more question, and this is based on innovation. Therefore, Claudia, you will be the first. Let's imagine that you have a magic stick. Uh, what will you do? Or what will be the best project that you may be able to, you want to do in the next three or four years? Well, the magic, uh, magic stick definitely would uh, call for um, an innovative uh, corporate, um, and cooperative uh, framework, policy framework, because it all starts from here. Uh, all, uh, all our colleagues that have been, uh, all the speakers and panelists today, they have to deal daily with, uh, um, let's say, legal requirements in their own countries or at European level. So if we have uh, a current policy framework which boosts innovation, which is, um, which is uh, pragmatic, so risk-based uh, risk and uh, uh, cost-effective, uh, which is promoting also cost-effective solutions, uh, that is going to certainly uh, better protect and better serve uh, public health from one side and the other uh, needs uh, that we have uh, across, of course, uh, all our, um, our life cycle. So definitely that would be uh, my very first uh, really uh, uh, solution. Uh, policy options with uh, innovative solutions. Let's not stick to standards which are old uh, or which um, stay with technologies of 200 years old, yeah? um, <laughs> why we're here. Yeah. This is the case of drinking water directly, so, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Jaime, you, you take the magic stick from uh, Claudia and uh, you have uh, one wish. Uh, okay, uh, magic stick is good, but work, I think, is better. Um, <laughs> We have commented, uh, we have uh, recently started a, a project, an RNDI project, uh, to study into the effects of irrigation or irrigating agricultural crops with reclaimed water in Madrid region. The, the, the objective of this project is to demonstrate how the use of reclaimed water has no music significant effect on certain crops. Uh, and in addition, we would like to act as its influence on the characteristics of the soil. Uh, we aim to offer the farmer an alternative supply of water, at the same time providing food and crops quality assurance and safety, all of which will be supported by scientific evidence. Um, we are going to, to, to build a, a greenhouse uh, that will be carried out in our Center of Excellence for Wastewater Treatment and Reuse, it is set on, on our water treatment plant in Torrejon, uh, a municipality close to Madrid city. Um, this greenhouse will also serve as a laboratory for cultivating and analyzing selected uh, agricultural species and soil samples. Uh, greenhouse cultivation is essential in ensuring that all the seedlings are subjected to the same environmental conditions and weather conditions not affected, yeah. Um, and we are going to, to carry out the, 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 the project uh, using um, one of the high economic interest uh, species in Madrid region, possibly pistachio, and other of rapid growth, uh, possibly lettuce. Um, both species will be drip irrigated with different types of water, uh, drinking water, reclaimed water, and also reclaimed water with added nutrients. And uh, they will be separated uh, and they will be irrigated uh, differently, but uh, all of them with the same environmental and weather conditions. This uh, project will be carried out uh, during 48 months. And uh, we have just started. We have to, to wait for uh, at least one or two years to have uh, some results. 
it, it would be crucial that you share the result at the end um, because sure, I'm sure. sure that a lot of farmers will be. Uh, Our goal uh, is to share it, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Hervé. So there is a, about Majestic, there is a sentence I like very much. I think they say it's from Saint-Exupéry. I'm not sure it is because many sentences have been given to him. They say, as concerns the future, the best is not to be able to predict it, but to make it happen. So it, it joins a little bit the previous speaker. I think that, uh, that um, magic sticks. No, <laughs> my dream would be today, wastewater treatment systems are seen as a pain. They are seen as a pain by industry. They are seen as a problem by municipality. The dream would be that they see that as an asset and, and municipalities are starting. Uh, see that as an asset, an asset to do what? Well, an asset to manage water, nitrogen, phosphorus flux, some carbon flux, and maybe even do a bit better and start to think about sequestering CO2, doing something with CO2. So that's really the dream that, and hopefully with that dream will come the problem of the value the fact that then we see a real value on, uh, on on water and wastewater because this is an asset, this has value. In, yeah. Alain? I, I will um, I will bounce back on what Hervé said. I think um, um, as a, as a citizen of the world and also as a, as a water segment um, president, uh, first of all, I would like to see in the coming years and the sooner the better. Uh, the, um, the the community to put a real value in in water, not not water con considered as a commodity that is free access and the free usage, but uh, more as a, as a commodity. I'm, I'm not saying that we have to create a commodity market around the water. This is not my point, but uh, we have really to value water for as a key asset for life and for industry, and not only for life but for industry as well. And as such. I would say that um, if um, we could see more and more projects in the, in the coming uh, months where uh, decarb decarbonization of the energy uh, will be end-to-end, -end, uh, uh, the infrastructure will be resilient and very much sustainable, minimizing the environmental footprint of this infrastructure, agricultural being one, discharge being another, the other one, recycling being the third one. Uh, it will be just um, a good thing for the citizen I am and a good thing for, for the planet. Thank you very much for, for everybody. Um, we, we have some questions from, um, from the, the, the audience. One of them is, uh, uh, can we um, use special chemicals treatment to remove dangerous substances? Therefore, it's more technical question. Or they should be... Uh, Invented, created, worked. I think uh, Jaime, that's what you will. Uh, that would be your your work. Um, I have replied in private to this question because we have in um, part of our working. Okay. Group, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, we uh, we have uh, one of the members which is dealing with uh, water treatments, and they have all kinds of specialties. So the quick question is yes. The detailed questions, I'm not the expert. I have sent the details of the experts. So uh, Peter will find, or will get in contact uh, with the NORA as well. Thank you. Um, there is also an interesting question. Um, should we use one network for the drinking water, uh, which usually pay most of the costs? Uh, or should we use the same, I would say, pipe for drinking and reused water? I say no, separated networks. Even more, we use uh, a specific color to mark all uh, which is related to, to reclaim the water. It is a purple color uh, for pipes, for manholes, for bulbs, for everything related to, to the uh, reclaim uh, network, the reclaim water network, it is in different color, sure, separated. Yeah, and I would say that in some, uh, in some city, for instance, Hong Kong, even for the water which is distributed to the household, you have different kinds of water. The drinkable not being the one you use for the toilets and not being the one you use for the shower. Wow. No. I, I don't see um, any other question from the, uh, from the audience. Therefore, I will ask um, 
uh, one other question is uh, the cooperation. Um, how is it possible to cooperate between uh, rural and uh, big cities and companies and cities? And also with the panel that we have here, um, how the, the audience could be engaged? Could they contact you? How should we, yeah, or should we do use this discussion that we have today to start something else um, from, from this? Well, maybe one, one comment is the point of views are very far between a small city and, and, and Europe. I mean, you know, small cities say, well, Europe, you know, what do they know about? Uh, and so I think this difference of point of view and of cultures, it's, it's a cultural thing, you know, uh, to bridge the gap. I like the term dot connector. I use that a lot when I was in Canada because <laughs> uh, uh, we had provinces that were fighting. But um, um, I think you really need to have dot connectors and it could be water Europe, it could be institutions like that, that really connect the cultures because um, otherwise it's, you're too far from uh, the culture of the small city constituent and they will view some of us as, as no, I, I, I know. It's like in the past, the, uh, the impossible dialogue between a academic and an industrialist uh, in some cases. So I think you need uh, you need dot connector. You need people or organizations that play the role of uh, of really uh, making people understand each other better. Yeah, yeah I would say that um, um, on the um, on the industry itself, uh, it's really connecting the dots. <clears throat> and we have instances. We have user groups. We have uh, standardizations. We have uh, uh, project in common where we we can absolutely tackle the complexity of the situations. However, I will put um, a call on the European Union and um, the Commission also to be sure that the, we, we could create and, uh, and push the different types of users to be under the same umbrella because at the end of the game, we, mm -hmm. all of us, we use the same resource. And so far um, here as well, I think we have to de-silo a little bit the, the agricultural policy versus the industrial policy versus the citizen policy, uh, which are still very uh, different from a water usage perspective. Yeah, and of course, entities like Water Euros are trying to do their best. This panel probably is a, a, a tool to, to, to share knowledge, to uh, encourage collaboration. Yeah, absolutely, indeed. Maybe the, the de-siloing, you know, the funny part, de-siloing happens easier in a village or in a small city. It happens in a bar and you have an aperitif and you de-silo. And so we need, to, <laughs> we, need, we need to be able to, that's why I think we see very interesting reuse projects where the, the, you know, the firefighters are joining, the agricultures are joining at the city level and they all go to the bar and they share aperitif and they decide. And I think it's important that uh, dimension. Uh, we don't go in a bar anymore. We just drink. <laughs> <laughs> Claudia? Well, uh, I, I really hope that uh, we'll be able to, to have uh, our normal life back as close as possible. And for what was even said before, I still, uh, uh, from time to time, uh, tell Dirk that uh, what if this conference was live? Uh, how much uh, would be different? But apart from that, and going back to... Mm -hmm let's say, um, our topic, uh, definitely the cooperation and someone already mentioned, um, Water Europe is a great example of cooperation among uh, all the water value chain. Uh, this can definitely be uh, replicated in terms of cooperation between the small uh, communities uh, and the bigger cities. And again here, uh, the, uh, let's say the policy support is fundamental. Uh, because uh, not all, uh, not all the, the, the smaller, let's say, realities have the same resources. And water is still a very precious resource. It's, uh, it's a human right. Huh? Therefore, yes, there has to be certain costs related, uh, but we also have to make sure that those costs are affordable for every and each uh, citizen. Uh, therefore, um, there are certain uh, economic systems which I'm not going to go into detail and complain about taxes in both Italy and Belgium. However, um, we do have uh, the, the tools and the, and the resources, uh, let's say, to, to make sure that uh, there is uh, uh, fresh and clean uh, drinking water and reused water for every European citizen. 
Thank you, Claudia. I have a, I have a question. Do, do you see any security issues sharing all the data from drinking and waste water to the general public? Jaime? No. Uh, maybe I haven't understood uh, the question. Uh, is, it, is it difficult or is it risky to share the data from the drinkable water and the wastewater? To the public? No, no, I, I don't think so. Uh, um, uh, we have a surveillance tool to to achieve uh, our um, requirements. You know, we are uh, as a public uh, utility. We, we we have to meet all requirements that are set on legislation uh, to discharge water into the rivers, to supply water with quality, with pressure, all these things. So. We are not worried about sharing data. Uh, we are doing uh, somehow. Uh, no, no problem on sharing data. No. Thank you, Jaime. You. I have the last question, and I think I'm able to to answer it. It's when do we drink? When is it time to lunch? I think this is now. Therefore, uh, I would like to thank you, uh, Claudia, Jaime, Hervé, Alain, and uh, Vim and Ilan to, to participate in this, um, this session. I would like also to thank uh, Loïc Charpentier and uh, Anka Popa, who did uh, an amazing job to, to create the, this. This is, uh, this is um, quite a substantial amount of work and also Dirk for the organizing this session. And I give the floor now to, uh, to Dirk. Thank you very, uh, very much, Laurent, and thank you very much, all the speakers. So, Laurent, I particularly also enjoyed your the creativity in which you expanded the the, the, the panel with the the, the, the earlier speakers. I think it was a uh, that's very good. Um, what I also liked very much is once again, I think during the discussion we hear, heard um, a lot of concepts coming up. I think which we have been hearing repeatedly already over the duration of these three days, which deal with thought leadership, the importance of collaboration, and then collaboration, I would say, along the water value chain, across sectors and borders, and also between competitors. And um, indeed, I think um, Water Europe is there to play a role in, um, in connecting the dots, also across cultures, being a national, regional, I would say, sectoral culture. So um, I think it was a very good discussion. Also, I think the, the importance of data, uh, very important here, uh, data sharing. I think that's also um, really important. I think really data, I mean, we often speak about the nexus of water with all these different sectors. I think really for a large degree, it's also about data sharing. Uh, so um, also other elements in the discussion like uh, absolutely wastewater treatment uh, plants as an asset, I think which very much also resounds with our, uh, with our Water Europe narrative uh, about the value of water, but also the value in water. So I think uh, a very good, good discussion. Um, so that brings us to the end of the, of the conference. Uh, before uh, I end this conference. I would also like to share with you that uh, actually today, I think very related to, uh, to today's this topic, we are releasing the second edition of our position paper on uh, the revision of the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive. Yeah, I will, um, I will put the, the, the link to the, to the second edition uh, in, the, in the chat box in a second. I'll, I would just like to share with you, I would say, the, the, the five main themes and topics that we are addressing in that position paper. First deals with carbon neutral and um, circular water management. The second one is on specific measures to address contaminants of emerging concerns and um, antimicrobial resistance. The third, which also came up a lot, I think, uh, during this discussion is the digitalization for energy and water efficiency. The fourth is about bringing back nature for better storm and small agglomeration water management. And the last one, I think, equally important, is about a water-friendly legislation built by and for European citizens. Yes, I'm going to share the ah, Louis has already kindly shared the link. Great, thank you very much, Louis. So with that, uh, we've come to the end of the session. We'll um, continue in about half an hour, so at twelve thirty, uh, with a side event on MEP Water Group. And with that, I wish you all um, a very nice afternoon, and I hope to see many of you. Uh, either this afternoon or tomorrow morning again at 10 o'clock.
Thank you all and bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.